Still a youthful 40, Mikhail Saakashvili rose to power in the heady days of the Rose Revolution of 2003 that swept out the government of the Soviet-era veteran, Eduard Shevardnadze. Staunchly pro-American when President Bush visited in 2005 at Tbilisi's Freedom Square, a George W. Bush Avenue was named in his honor. The tilt towards Washington was bound to exacerbate tensions with Moscow, particularly when it came to the two breakaway pro-Russian regions of South Ossetia and Abkhazia. For President Saakashvili, it was a matter of national pride to bring these back properly under Georgian control. Last week, he took that chance. After days of clashes in South Ossetia, Georgian troops launched a major ground and air offensive on the region. The Russians rallied to their allies and invaded the territory and Georgia proper. Had Mr. Saakashvili overreached himself? At first defiant, he began to look increasingly harassed with doubts at home about the wisdom of provoking Russia into action. Today, the U.S. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice arrived in Tbilisi to bolster President Saakashvili's standing, though it has been reported that as recently as July, she'd warned him against entering a military conflict with Russia that he just couldn't win. In Tbilisi this afternoon, President Saakashvili made it clear where he believed the blame lies for Moscow's invasion. Washington had backed his membership of NATO, but this was blocked by major European powers for fear of upsetting Moscow. I warned Western media at that stage that it was asking for trouble. Not only they denied us membership action plan, but they specifically told the world that they are denying Georgia membership action plan because of existing territorial conflicts in Georgia, basically inviting the trouble. 